if you're new, my name is Samantha and in March of 2019, I was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. Well, I wasn't actually diagnosed with stage four until a little bit later, but it was stage four at the time. But anyway, my first step in trying to get rid of the cancer was chemotherapy and I finished that at the end of July in 2019. So now it has been two years since I finished chemotherapy. When I finished chemotherapy, I was completely bald. One of the most asked questions that I get is how long does it take for hair to come back? Like, when will my hair be at this length? And when will my hair be at that length? And all of that. So I decided I would make this video and go through pictures that I have of myself over the past two years and kind of explain what my hair was like at that time and what kind of hairstyles I did and how I managed my hair throughout the two years. If you are interested, I have another video that's one year after chemo. It shows video over one whole year of my hair growth progress. Please keep in mind while you're watching this video that everybody is different and everybody's hair is different. I know some people who finished chemotherapy around the same time as me or even after me and their hair is longer than mine. And that's just because their hair just grows faster than mine. And I know people that finished around the same time as me and their hair is shorter than mine. And a lot of it also has to do with the kinds of medications that you're still on. I'm on hormone therapy medication and ribocyclib, which is like a targeted therapy, and it slows my hair growth a little bit. I can definitely tell because my hair is thinner than it used to be. Also, please ignore my swollen left eye. Yeah, I'm having that problem again where my eye swells up. It's very obnoxious and annoying. Okay, so first, this is what my hair looked like right before starting chemotherapy. This is right after I found out I was diagnosed with cancer. Right before I started chemo, I cut it to like a little above my shoulders because I just didn't know when my hair was gonna start falling out and I didn't wanna deal with the, you know, really, really long hair falling out. Then when my hair started falling out, I shaved it down to a buzz cut because it was just a lot easier to manage. Then my hair really started falling out. You could see white patches all over my head, so I decided to completely shave it off. This is one of the last photos I have right before finishing chemo in July of 2019. At this point, I had tiny little hairs growing back slightly that grew through chemo, but they were super light and you really couldn't see them very well. This is me at my PET scan in August and you can see the little tiny hairs a little bit better, maybe if you zoom in. This is August 21st, there's still not much change. This is September 4th. In this picture, you can really see the hair getting thicker and you can really tell that there are some hairs that are a lot longer than the others. Those are the hairs that had been growing all through chemo. Keep track of my eyebrows over the next few pictures because you're gonna see they start to disappear really fast and then they come back in really fast. Like, they, the new ones started growing in around the same time that the other ones were falling out. This is September 9th. I'm wearing the same shirt in this one because I was recovering from my mastectomy and it had the buttons in the front and it had like a little pocket for my drains, which was really awesome. So I only had like three of those shirts, so I kind of alternated through them. I got glasses on this day, so you can't really see my eyelashes very well, but my eyebrows those dark shadows closer to the nose are like the new hairs coming in, but there wasn't actually any hair there. It was just like a dark shadow underneath the skin, and it was really weird. And then like farther out, closer to the ear, it's like a lot thinner. Um, yeah, so that was fun. I actually don't have a photo of me when my eyebrows and eyelashes were at their lowest point, but Gray took this video of me, and I love this video so much. I think it's hilarious. Like. I just don't have any hair on my face. I just think it looks so funny. I actually finished chemo early because I was supposed to keep going, but I ended up having neuropathy in my fingers, so I stopped. So probably if I had finished out all the way through the end of the chemo I was supposed to do, then my eyebrows and eyelashes would have been completely gone. Okay, so this is September 19th. My head hair is looking so much thicker now. It's a, a lot darker. The eyebrows are looking a little bit rough, but you can tell that they were coming in really quickly. Like there's not that much time between those, that last video and this picture. I was in the middle of radiation, which is why I have the marker marks all over me. This is September 26th and you can see things are thickening a lot more. My eyebrows and my head hair. I would like to point out that during this time, it feels like things are moving super slowly. Like you're like, I'm done with chemo. I want my hair to grow back. Let's go, come on. But if you actually take pictures of yourself like week to week, you'll actually be able to see that there's a lot of progress and it'll probably make you feel a lot better. This is September 29th, so three days later. This is actually the first time I went out in public without a hat. I had one with me because it was super sunny, but I felt totally comfortable not wearing one. 
People were still giving me weird looks, but not as many weird looks as I got when I was completely bald with like the hat and everything. So um, I was like, why not? I really couldn't care less, honestly. This is October 5th on a hike. This hike murdered me because it was in the middle of radiation, but it's a really good picture of my hair. You can see the progress there. This is October 14th, our trip to Disney, and I didn't wear a hat on this entire trip. My hair was so much darker in these pictures, and you can see my eyebrows and hair are just looking so much better. My real color was coming back. My eyelashes were coming in, but they were coming in super straight, so it was super annoying. They like kept getting in my eyes and stuff. This is October 22nd. So if you look at this picture and the hike picture, there's like two weeks between that time, but you can really tell that there's like a big difference there. November 15th, there's like huge progress here. The back of my head was like completely filled in at this point, um, and it was getting so much longer. This is November 23rd. I always look at this picture and I'm like, remember when my eyebrows were coming in and they were finally starting to look good? Because this is right before I started my targeted therapy and right after I started that, my eyebrows kind of started going back. They started getting thinner and everything. So yeah, you'll start to notice that in the pictures. This is a month after that last photo, December 22nd. This is from our vacation, January 6th. The main purpose of this photo was to show how I could lift my arm up after surgery. It was a big accomplishment for me. If you know, you know. This is February 2nd. I think you can really see an eyebrow difference in those uh, that month's time frame. All right, here's February 20th. This was a fun time period because it's when my hair started getting long enough to get curly. You hear like the term chemo curls because a lot of people's hair comes back in curly. A lot of people, when they first start getting their hair back in, they're like, my hair is coming in perfectly straight. You have to like let it get long enough to actually curl. And um, also, a lot of people, if your hair was already straight, it's probably still going to come in straight. Um, even though some people's hair does end up curling and it ends up being different, my hair has always kind of been curly on the ends. This is March 7th, less eyebrows, more hair. <laughs> this is around the point when I started not really being able to get out of bed just and go. Because if I slept weird on my hair, then it would like stick up in weird places. So it was finally getting long enough to like, I guess, have hair problems. It was still really easy to control at this point though, like just put water on it and then it just dries fine and it dries really fast because it's still really short. This is March 27th. You can really see the curls coming in here and the lack of eyebrows. This is March 30th and this is just an example of my hair just kind of being silly. Like I don't know really what's going on and also me complaining about medication side effects like I do a lot. Okay, this is April 15th. This is when my hair started going crazy. I did not know how to handle the curls or my hair being that length. I was starting to get bangs, the curls were coming in. It was a fun time though. Here's May 16th. This is a month later. This was just a really fun time because I got so many compliments on my hair because people actually thought it looked like a real hairstyle. I could just take a shower in the morning and it would dry super quickly because it was really short and I would just get up, take a shower, go. This is a photo from our beach trip, May to June 2020. And for reference, here's the beach trip from the year before. There's big hair difference there. <laughs> this is June 15th. I feel like this is when my eyebrows started coming back in. They kind of like came in, went away, and then they kept growing more until they look like they do now, which still isn't the greatest, but I really don't care about it anymore. This is July 9th, the day we got engaged. I had super tight curls that day, so I must have taken a shower in the morning. Whenever I had just washed my hair and, and it was humid outside, they were always like really tight and curly. This is August 3rd, 2020. This is what I use as my year after finishing chemotherapy picture. I got these headbands right after our trip out west and I started using them a lot. My hair was like finally long enough to actually use them. Before I tried to use headbands, but it just didn't work like at all for my hair. Just the way my hair was, it just kind of like stuck out in like random spots and it just, it didn't look good with headbands. I know a lot of people don't have that same experience, like they can make their hair look good with headbands, but I just couldn't until like a year after finishing chemo. This is one of our engagement pictures we took on August 5th, and you can see here that my hair was starting to look a little less like an actual hairstyle because 
the hair at the bottom was like a lot longer. So if you have a piece of hair that's growing from here and it's this long, then it's gonna be this long. But if you have a piece of hair that's growing from down here and it's this long, then it's gonna be this long also. And so then you end up not having like hair up here that goes all the way down, but you have like hair here that does. And so then it kind of looks a little strange. It was still really curly though. So the curls did help a lot to hide that I feel like. This is around the time when a lot of people get haircuts. I just didn't really care. <laughs> this is August 23rd. This is just what my hair looked like when it was out of a headband, just so you can see my bangs were getting a lot longer. This is September 3rd and this is when I started experimenting with hairstyles. This is one that I did a lot. Two French braids and then I put like hair ties in the back. If I needed something where my hair was out of my face but I didn't want to wear a headband, this is the hairstyle I used. I used this hairstyle on so many hikes and stuff and at first I ended up having to use a bunch of bobby pins to keep some things in place but eventually I didn't really need to use bobby pins anymore. Alright, this is a month later on October 2nd. I was able to get my hair into two French braids. Now disclaimer, it only stayed in for like five minutes, if that, but it was still an accomplishment. <laughs> October 18th, here's that hairstyle that I was showing you before, working well for me on a hike. Okay, this is November 9th. This is the best ponytail that I was able to do at the time. No, I never went out in public like this. <laughs> this is December 9th. This is my first real haircut after finishing chemo. It made the pieces in the back more of the same length and it just made it look so much thicker and more like a hairstyle even though I still had awkward layers in there. December 25th. Around these holidays was when I really started doing the halfback style that I am still doing today. Back then the front pieces really fell out a lot. There was no way to get them all the way back. This was a game changer when I was finally able to do this. It's just such an easy hairstyle. You just put your hair up and then it's back. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to braid anything. New Year's Eve. Still me wearing that same hairstyle. Okay, January 28th, don't pay attention to my dirty mirror. This is a picture Gray took of me on Valentine's Day, if you wanna know what my hair looked like, not in the half back. So this is a wedding picture from March 2021. I was super excited because my hairstylist was actually able to do a hairstyle on my hair and make it look good for the wedding. She used a ton of bobby pins, but you couldn't really see them and she knew what she was doing and she, she made it look great. She did like this braid, into a halfback type thing and then I had like a little headband that tied around. So I would recommend that if you are planning a wedding and you want to know when your hair is going to be back enough to do a hairstyle, I would say around a year and a half, like plus or minus a couple months. Um, that's typically when a lot of people are able to do the halfback style. This is April 24th and the front pieces were just longer here so they just weren't as annoying. They weren't like blowing into my eyes. Okay, this is a picture from our beach trip this year and so for reference here are the three years of beach photos in a row. Big hair growth. This is just a picture from that trip but it's the back of my head so you can see my hair better. And this is a picture from July 15th when I was trying on all those bridesmaid dresses. You can see the back of my head here. Um, also, you should check out that video because it's really funny. Gray was hilarious in that video. It's on our new channel. So if you haven't subscribed to that, go check that out. There's a link in the description. And at the end of this video, there will be a place you can click to go there too. And here's me now, two whole years after finishing chemotherapy. All right, so this is what my hair looks like when it's just down. You can tell it's actually pretty long if I like straighten it out. Um, but there's lots of awkward layers like up here, you, you, like look at the difference in length and like go up a little higher and they're shorter too in the front. So yeah, that's why I typically put my hair up and back like this, just because then you can't really tell, like you just think my hair is this length and there's not like all this like, <laughs> wonky shape that's like out in it. I, I don't even know what's going on. I wanted to make sure that I took this video today because I am actually going to get a haircut tomorrow because I want more of my hair to be the same length. I want it to look thicker. Maybe I'll insert a picture of that here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful. I tried to go into a lot of detail because I know that there are some people that just want to know what the hair is going to look like and when. And so I did my best. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, 
subscribe if you want to support me and uh, there's more cancer related videos if you don't want to watch cancer related videos but you still think I'm cool my husband and I have a couples channel you can subscribe to that link in the description and also it'll be on the screen yeah that's all bye